Hey, what's up, it's Matt, and today I want to talk to you about the evolution of facial expressions. Not much of a lead-in besides that, we're just going right in. Okay, we use facial expressions to communicate social meaning, right? If you look at someone else's face, you can often tell what they mean or what they want without them even needing to say anything. Even the term says this, facial expression, you're expressing something. It's a form of social communication. Well, this 2014 paper from Psychological Science suggests that facial expressions may have evolved to serve actual functional purposes rather than expressing social cues. The researchers looked at what eyes do during expressions of fear and disgust. Okay, so you saw what I just did there, right? When I was fearful, my facial expression physically opened my eyes, allowing me to see as much as I could. But when I was disgusted, my facial expression did the exact opposite. It physically scrunched up my eyes, allowing me to see much less, but focus more on what I was looking at. And this was all confirmed by the paper that I mentioned. The researchers found that participants who made fearful facial expressions were more sensitive to surrounding stimuli, especially in the periphery, than those who made disgusted ones. Yet, those who made disgusted ones were more visually sharp than those who made fearful expressions. Now, it made sense to me that our eyes would grow wider with fear and we'd be able to see more, but the disgust response, focusing more on what we're looking at, confused me. Because I always assumed that when looking at something disgusting, our eyes would sort of let in less light because we'd want to see less of the disgusting thing. But in reality, the disgust facial expression is designed to close off a lot of the other light so you can focus extra well on the thing you're looking at, the disgusting thing. So why does that happen? It's theorized that the fear and disgust facial expressions have evolutionary origins that have ultimately helped us to survive. When we fear that there is a nearby predator, we need to scan our horizons to figure out where it is. We don't necessarily need to see it in the best of detail, we just need to know generally where it is so we can get the heck out of there. On the other hand, let's say we see something that disgusts us, like contaminated food or a diseased animal. This initial disgust expression forces us to focus on the subject of our disgust, and this enhanced focus allows us to accurately determine that this is something we should steer clear from. So the expressions of fear and disgust both evolved in humans as tactics for surviving. Fear as a means of escaping prey, and disgust as a means of determining the things that we should not contact or ingest. Now, of course, there are more facial expressions than just disgust and fear, but interestingly, the authors theorize that all facial expressions lie on a continuum between disgust and fear. And if you think about it, that actually makes sense. If facial expressions evolved not as a means of communicating social cues, but simply as ways of letting in differing amounts of light, then fear and disgust are on opposite ends of the spectrum. Fear lets in the most and disgust the least. Every other expression we know or could conceive lets in an amount of light somewhere between that of disgust and fear. Now one of the cool things about this theory is that it's rooted in the physiological, unchanging properties of light and our eyes. No matter what culture you're in, doing this, even if it doesn't mean fear, will still always make your eyes the most sensitive to light, but give you the least amount of focus on the subject, whereas doing this will make your eyes the least sensitive to light, but give you the most focus on your subject. Something else cool about this research is it furthers our understanding of how our emotions reflect our interpretation of reality. Of course, it's very well understood that emotions do that on a psychological level. If you're in a bad mood, you're gonna interpret the same event differently than if you had been in a good mood. But this research also suggests that how we are feeling literally influences how we see the physical world. If we're fearful or disgusted by something, that is going to influence how much sensitivity our eyes have and how clear the subject of our vision is. So this means that in addition to emotions influencing our psychological perception of events, they also influence our physical and physiological perception of events because they change the way that light enters our eyes. To summarize everything I've said so far and conclude this video, a lot of people have theorized that facial expressions evolved to serve social purposes. And while we can't entirely rule that out, this work suggests that facial expressions evolved to serve functional purposes related to light. The fear expression opens up your eyes to let in more light, which could have helped us to detect and avoid predators. The disgust facial expression lets in less light, but focuses more on the subject, allowing us to identify and steer clear from disgusting things that could harm us. The authors also theorize that if every facial expression is really just a way of letting a differing amount of light into your eyes, then every single facial expression should lie on a continuum somewhere between disgust, which lets in the least amount of light, and fear, which lets in the most. And that's it. Cool. Thanks. Uh, thanks for watching the video, and also thanks to Adam Anderson at Cornell for talking to me about this paper and helping me understand some of it. Also, this video was released today in collaboration with a bunch of my other YouTuber friends. We all did the evolution of something. So go ahead and click on this playlist here and go watch their other videos. Thanks. I'll see you later.